Hey everyone, um, don't ask about the environment. We're in a, I swear it's a very expensive hotel. It doesn't look like it, but we're gonna be talking about the video card instead, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm sure the hotel people will love that. I don't see any security cameras, so I think we're good. So this is the 7900XTX. It is a reference model AMD card, and we're gonna be walking through some of the external of the design and then also talking more about that thermistor that we mentioned in the news video. So that's gonna be the really interesting part for this is where would that actually come into play in a system? Before that, this video is brought to you by Montex Sky One Lite PC case. The Sky One Lite is Montex's high airflow case with ventilated front panel, included fans, and RGB LED accents. The Sky One Lite is a compact mid-tower case for ATX builds, and the ARGB LED quick connect on the front panel makes it easy to maintain the case without all of the cables. Dust filters are strategically placed, and there's basic cable management features while still maintaining a competitive price. Learn more at the link in the description below. All right, so reference designs. As always, there are going to be partner models of these as well. And with the thermistor, which is the thing I really want to talk about, that's not necessarily going to end up on the partner models, but who knows? If it's something that AMD leverages in a really cool way, it's possible they all kind of uh, work on something similar. Certainly XFX, for example, has done a lot of cool stuff with their fans in the past being socketable. But for the reference model, it's about two and a half slots, so it's more similar to what you would traditionally use for a card thickness. The back doesn't have any ventilation here uh, in the I.O. plate, and instead it's using vertically oriented fins. So no ventilation in the I.O. I saw a couple comments about, oh, there's no holes in the I.O. That's actually okay in this situation because the fins aren't pointed that way anyway, so the air is not really going that direction. You have a little bit of bleed over, but most of it's going to come out the top and the bottom, and for the bottom side that means, of course, into the motherboard, but this is not a new approach to fin stack design. So that's something that's been accounted for in the past. So let's look more closely at how this is actually uh, put together as, as much, I'm not allowed to take it apart yet, but uh, we can at least look externally. So three fan design, these look to me to be about the 83 to 90 mil fans. These are not the 116s that you see on some of the really large cards now. The 116s are the one where they run a little bit higher off the top, another half inch or so, and start to really restrict some of your, uh, your component choices. So these are the smaller fans, more traditional design. Blade count does not appear to be too, too edgy to me. It's uh, more similar to what you saw in the previous Radeon 6000 series uh, reference model. And then internally underneath, you can see the fin stack where it's got some of that topography where it's a little bit of elevation at the top and you've got gaps in the middle. Those gaps in some areas are used for cable routing, uh, but mostly it looks like they are just the L-shaped fins, which are used for flow guidance. So when you use L-shaped fins that close 90 degrees on one side, like top or bottom, that becomes useful for blocking air strategically. Normally you don't want it to get a certain place or you want to force it a certain place as opposed to these open fins where it just runs where the fin's going, basically. So none of that is particularly special for this, except uh, that we just wanted to point out how AMD is designing this and that as far as the fin stack goes, it's a little bit on the thicker side without going into three slot territory. For the thermistor though, so there's a little green PCB in there with a small black SMD on it, surface mount device, and that uh, is for temperature sensing. So thermistors are similar in some ways to like the thermocouple, except they're, they're smaller and they are more uh, efficient to cram into a space like this. And because this is uh, sensing the ambient temperature, you're able to get effectively a case temperature, or at least an air inlet temperature on the GPU. That can be super useful. So the reasons that's useful, first of all, the card will still follow. How does this chair look? Excellent, it's beige. Uh, the card will still follow the GPU curve or the GPU uh, temperature. So you've got edge temperature, junction temperature, things like that. And first and foremost, it's going to adjust the fan speed based on GPU temperature. But for a thermistor, because it's not going to be the primary uh, means for adjusting the fan speed or hysteresis or anything, what you're really, I don't know if AMD realized this putting it in here or if it's going to be a side benefit, but um, the biggest benefit is what we saw with the EVJ10 series cards where they were the ACX ones before ICX came out and you had some stuff like MOSFETs and CAPS that would burn up because 
the GPU core didn't get hot enough to kick the fans into gear, so they were sitting there off because the core was fine, because just the heat sink alone was enough to sink all that heat and uh, just run without the fan spinning. But then if you had even a slight amount of load, some of the other SMDs on the board or VRM components could burn up and actually die as a result of it because the fans never turned on. So if there's a secondary fan curve, and from what we understand from earlier discussion with AMD, it sounds like they are looking into exposing both of these options to users, maybe through software later. If there's a secondary fan curve, you can make sure that even if it's a really low constant load, uh, they're still going to kick in every now and then if you have a, a case that is just bad or if you have a high ambient temperature, maybe you have no AC or something like that. So that's where it's, it's, it's cool. I'm interested in it. This is also going to, in a way, democratize letting people see the case ambient temperature. So you can use this, the card, as a tool to see how your fan placement in a computer case will affect the actual temperature internally. So if you add an, a set of fans at the front, or maybe you only had a, a one front, one back before you go to three front, one back, you can actually see, as long as you control those fan speeds, especially control these fan speeds, you'll see the impact of your choices in the case, which is really interesting because it makes the video card become a utility to design your case layout with fan placement. So I think that's awesome because we do a lot of case testing and we're gonna be able to use that as a tool. Uh, we have other ways to do it, like thermocouples, but the average user isn't going to go through all of that. So that's why this is, is interesting. You can do thermocouples with really high end boards, like five, six hundred dollars as well. But um, I think most people don't even know they come in the box. It's mostly Asus and Gigabyte, shove them in there, and uh, you plug them into a two pin header. So anyway, that's kind of cool. The rest of this, so on the back, um, I mean, there's not much to speak of really. We've got a couple screws that I'm not allowed to take out. Uh, that are, I, I think, just sticking the back plate to the base plate, it looks like. And then these red triangles, which I'm assuming make it faster, but I'm not sure. I, I don't know why the red triangles are there. For uh, the whole spacing, we don't know yet. It's going to be under here, of course. Um, our understanding, I think this is correct, is that the, the FCC marks and everything are going to move internally. So these are all going to move inside. So that's all that uh, there is for the, for the back, really. I mean, it's all pretty simple. This is metal back plate, from what I can tell right now. Um, so there's a good amount of plastics in here, but otherwise, the only thing left that's worth note is the pin out in here. So there's a two pin. The two pin just goes to uh, a, you can plug in the LEDs, power the LEDs on without powering the card on. Not useful for an end user, but useful for us for video purposes. And then the larger pin here is the one that goes to all the fans with the thermistor we discussed earlier, and that's why that's got so many wires running to it. And then that one's just the LEDs, which is currently unplugged because it was on demo. So, oh, and there's three red fins. So that pretty much recaps it. Thanks for watching, as always. Subscribe for more. You can go to store.gamersaccess.net to help us out directly, and we will see you all next time. I'm going to take this now. <laughs>